Hi and welcome back. Uh, as long as you're here, we might as well paint some purple space marines, uh, or one purple space marine to be exact. It's a commission job from a customer who um, designed his own chapter with purple and gold uh, as uh, the primary colors. And uh, uh, the last intercessor I painted was yellow, which is a notoriously hard color, but purple is even worse. So one step further down the ladder of really horrible paints for me and uh, wish me luck and let's get going. See you at the end. The model was uh, undercoated with the Chaos Black spray and then uh, I applied a mixture of Nagaroth Night and Xeris Purple in very thin layers, uh, thinned down with water and I used about three or four layers to have, make it cover. Purple has some serious coverage issues and uh, I, I have actually been careful to paint purple since it's so hard but uh, this time I, it was a commission and I had to give it a try so. And uh, then I applied some Balthasar gold on the arm uh, that was going to be gold colored and uh, also the trims of the other shoulder pad and the chest eagle. Uh, this is a commission from a client so uh, I could not deviate from the colors as I did with the last intercessor and got a lot of flack from the internet. How could you? Well, I know Emil and... Uh, I knew he wouldn't mind. That's why I did it. And I like red more than black, so maybe that discussion can end now. Uh, the ribbing and the uh, uh, parts that were gonna be black, like the bolter, uh, I just painted uh, with uh, some thin down uh, Abaddon black. And then I took some Shice purple, I think that's what it's called, and then I just panel lined the whole model. Uh, the good thing with doing this with contrast paint is that you can wipe it off uh, if you make any mistakes and it covers a lot better than uh, the shade colors. Uh, so this is very good for panel lining. It flows really good, it has good coverage and you can wipe it off for a short while before it dries. And uh, yeah, I think it looks great. So I used that and uh, some Gorgrunt of fur on the uh, gold areas, just uh, panel lining and actually shading some also because it's actually very good for that also. It's like a thin glaze so you can just uh, feather it out and make a nice little highlight. And I did this all over the gold areas. The first highlight was a pure Xeris purple. I applied where I wanted the highlights. Uh, I wanted uh, the same kind of shine highlights that I did on the Imperial Fist Intercessor so I uh, I started making some shine lines, I called them on, on all the panels that I wanted to have like a, a little streak of, of light on. And then uh, also edge highlighting and all the raised areas that I wanted to have a, a nice highlight. And uh, this is just done with glazing and uh, uh, just being careful to get it where you want it. The knee pads get some hot spots for like uh, where the light shines off from them and uh, just do this until you're satisfied it takes a few layers and but if you do it thin and uh, it looks really good so take your time here uh, that's a secret uh, I mean and check out some reference patent pics I mean that's what I do check out other people's videos check out reference pictures of uh, other minis or actual materials that has a shine to them and try to replicate that it's not that hard if you if you just give it time and if you uh, yeah if you if you really get used to it you have to train <laughs> the gold area has got a first highlight of uh, retributor armor uh, just careful to Thin it down so it you can create a feathering highlight on the shoulder pad and then just be really neat when you paint the chest eagle so you don't have to go back and reshade it. Just hit the hot spots. And uh, do this a few times and create the, the shine highlights where you want them and, and uh, just a hot spot top of the shoulder pad there. It's uh, uh, 
gonna get a little dot of silver later on. I did the same thing on the on the arm and just uh, kind of panel highlighted that also uh, and smoothed it out with some water on the brush. I then did the extreme highlights on the gold with some room fang steel uh, to create the hot spots and some line edge highlighting here uh, just to get that final shine on it. I marked out the hot spots on the armor and the, the streaks where the where the light will hit off the shiny areas with the, the color lilac it's an edge highlight paint that's really light but it's it's it really goes well with these two purples I've used before and uh, I will go over these later on with with some other highlight paints and then finally reapply these uh, but I want early on to know where I want the light to hit the model I then shaded the areas between the extreme highlights with some shish purple contrast paint thinned down with contrast medium about 50 50 and uh, to create some some darker areas I think it looks nice and uh, then I went in and uh, highlighted with some gene stealer purple thinned down and where I actually placed those extreme highlights with the decala lilac and um, this is just to bring those highlights down and to like um, create a smooth transition between the jeans that are purple and the color lilac. I will uh, reapply the, the lighter paint at a later stage, but this is a kind of a good way to, to f keep where you want the extreme highlights so, you, so it shines through the, the highlights here and uh, at the same time you create kind of a, a nice transition. You go back and forth between colors uh, doing this. You go back to the to the serious purple and just thin feathering layers to bring down the uh, gene stealer purple and then reapply some gene stealer purple and just until you're happy, you just go back and forth between these colors uh, until you have a nice transition. It takes some time, but it, but it looks really good and if if you're not in a stressful situation, it's quite satisfying to do this. It's, it's really nice. And uh, on the helmet, I just, uh, uh, yeah, I just decided where I wanted the highlights. Uh, I think I did this in a not, not the normal way. Uh, usually people just put a dot up on the helmet and uh, I wanted some kind of line there going across the skull and the dot in the forehead. I think that looked kind of cool. It's just uh, something I chose when I did this model. And uh, again here, just reapply these thin layers. I gave the gold areas a wash of thin down yandan yellow to to glaze it up to more of a gold-like color since Balthasar gold is, is kind of a bronzy gold. And then I reapplied the extreme highlights with some room fang steel again. The helmet was uh, edge highlighted with the color lilac again, really carefully and with a sharp brush. I just uh, carefully and slowly reapplied all the edge highlights to make them as thin as I can. I know there are people out there like Max Fillet who can create microscopic edge highlights that are yeah, insane. I've actually held his miniatures in my hand and it's it's unbelievable. I thought, I didn't believe it when I saw the pictures, but then I held them in my hand. It was like, okay, he can actually paint this good. And uh, you just have to keep on practicing. And uh, uh, one secret that I learned from uh, from the Evan Metal team, I met two of the Swedish guys uh, here in Sweden. And uh, they told me that actually just going back with the, base color and correcting mistakes is a big secret to getting those uh, super fine highlights. And as you can see here, I I make a lot of mistakes when I paint, uh, but if you're fast and if you have thin paint, you, you can just um, wipe it off with a thumb and reapply it. And uh, I do that a lot. And uh, that's the difference with thinning your paint also. It really makes it a lot easier to remove. Sometimes I use a wet dry brush and just scrub it off, but then you have to be really careful not to 
uh, get your original paint job back uh, to rub off by mistake. Uh, here you can see me applying the, the hot spots with just pure skull white uh, thinned down, but yeah, it's nice on the on shiny armor to just get some some hot spots where the, the reflections are, and uh, I think that makes the model pop. Some Mechanica Standard Grey, uh, thinned down and applied carefully on the ribbings. Uh, this is my least favorite part of the model. It's, it usually gets in where it shouldn't and I have to repaint these parts several times. And uh, uh, Celestial Grey as the final highlight. The leather pouches, belts and bags were painted with uh, some uh, Dryad bark and uh, highlighted with uh, Thin down Gorthor Brown and uh, second highlight I think was Steel Legion Drab and then uh, the final edge highlight was with Rackarth Flesh, one of my favorite paints, it's really good and yeah, can highlight a lot of beige brown and yeah, a lot of earthy paints with this paint, it's really good, so I use it a lot and uh, just uh, thinly applied edge highlights here with that color. Uh, I don't know what happened here but my paint started acting up. I don't know uh, why so I had to go back a few times and then uh, <clears throat> did a glaze with uh, wildwood thin down. Uh, Bane Blade Brown was used for the purity seals uh, highlighted with uh, Rackard Flesh and uh, Pallid Wish Flesh for the final highlights just to get a nice uh, parchment feel. If you want to learn how to paint these, uh, check out Darren Latham's channel. He has a really good tutorial on purity seals. I kind of copied his style. The wax was base coated with Screamer Pink and uh, highlighted with Emperor's Children. Uh, and careful just to get it on the raised areas and the edges and uh, some extreme highlights with Fulgrim Pink just to make it shine a little bit and then some uh, purple contrast paint as a final wash. The bolter was highlighted with uh, Mechanica Standard Grey just uh, edge highlighted all the panels and uh, careful not to miss anything and then some Celestial Grey uh, reapplied all over the edges but a thinner layer uh, and the metal parts Lead Belcher, as usual, uh, and uh, washed those with uh, uh, Null Oil after applying a highlight of uh, Roomfang Steel. Sometimes I apply the highlight before I wash it. Um, I just try stuff out, and this time I think it worked kind of good. Uh, it brings down the, the, uh, the highlights a little bit. The eyes were painted with warp stone glow, thin layers. Uh, I think I applied two or three layers of this just to get a good coverage, but you don't want those eyes being all grainy. And uh, then I highlighted that with some moot green. I really like this for green lenses. And green is a really good uh, complement to purple, I think. I think it looks good together. And Creed Cocky was uh, applied as the dot highlight in the eyes. Some thin down chaos black uh, used for the text on the parchment, uh, the scroll work. Just uh, check out Darren's video again if you want to know how this is done. He has a really excellent tutorial on this and more in depth. But it's just, just be careful. The base was dry brushed with uh, Mornfang Brown, uh, just uh, with a small dry brush to avoid hitting the feet and uh, just kind of thick layer and then Bane Blade Brown was uh, applied after that uh, and Rackarth Flesh as the final highlight. Then some static grass and the miniature is done. I gave it a coat of uh, monitoring varnish as a final step to protect it. I, I'm not sure if this is going to be a gaming piece or not, uh, the client didn't say but um, I'm Overall, quite happy with the purple and the gold. Uh, next time will be better, but it's okay. Okay, I think that went pretty well, and uh, I'm gonna paint some more purple in the future. Uh, next 
challenge will be probably white or black, which are my absolute least favorite colors to paint. Uh, I'm gonna tease you with them a little bit longer, but uh, they will be on the channel <laughs> sooner or later. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe if you uh, enjoy this video and uh, share it with your friends and family if you want. <laughs> See you in the next video. Bye.